and uh, I'm going to be reading a little from one of my stories in my short story collection, Unfortunate Elements of My Anatomy. The story I'll be reading a little from is The Law of Conservation of Death. On the 15th birthday of your third reincarnation, you feel his breath on your skin, new skin never tainted until now. At once the sky darkens and balloons, gift, gifts and cake no longer matter as your lives come rushing back. You've turned 15 before, but that's the least of it. He's found you again. The First Reincarnation Once upon a time, you and he shared a life together. Eventually that life ended. It's a mystery what metaphysical laws dictate who becomes a ghost and who reincarnates, who forgets their past lives and who remembers. You only know his place in the universe and yours. In this new life, you're born into a family of particular expectations. You're ladies, so act like it. A lady sits quiet and calm. A lady only knows man's touch when she's married and doesn't fidget as unseen fingers explore her skin. A lady is not haunted. You stick with crowds in the daylight, believing the herd will keep you safe from the predator. Conversations muffle his voice. His fleshless fingertips go unfelt when you jostle friends and neighbors on the street. But at night, you're never as alone as you should be. He enters your chambers and climbs into your bed. A lady mustn't know a man until she's married, but he promises he married you long ago. You run screaming to your family. They say your wailing is unladylike and accuse you of dreaming. When that excuse is no longer convenient when you've begun to claw at your skin. How can he touch you if there's no skin? They accuse you of madness. At 22 years old, you're committed to a madhouse far from home. Your caretakers say they want to help, but you soon learn that help is their way of saying hurt. No one visits except him. Of course, he'll follow you wherever you go. He's yours, he says. There are no crowds to protect you from his whispers and you feel his fingers until winter numbs your scarred skin. This isolation is familiar. Before you die of pneumonia in your cold asylum cell, you recall the end of that first life in his lonesome castle by the sea, where he murdered you. The second reincarnation, or tried. A body dies, but it seems life goes on. You chalked up that last one to bad luck. Surely he can't find you again when the world's population booms between each birth. New people surround you, their lives fleeting and precious. The world comes apart as global war looms, but you cling to every fresh sensation. When his whisper finds you again, you bite your tongue and trim your nails. No one will accuse you of madness this time. But to keep him secret carries a cost. Quiet surrender makes him comfortable. He calls you by that first name, the one he knew you as in that first life, like it still means something. You tell yourself it's only meaningless syllables. He wears you down in whispers and strokes. You scream bloody murder and steal yourself for another death in the madhouse. Maybe this time he'll leave you alone. Fortunately, medical science has advanced since your first reincarnation. They don't diagnose people with madness anymore. This world of needles and electricity and psychology is so civilized. You aren't mad. You have a condition. Most women have those, don't they? Perfectly treatable. Take two pills every evening and get some rest. Nice that it is, it is not to die in a cold cell. There's no treatment for haunting. If you and he were married, death should have parted you. Yet he persists. It's your tethering his doing. Did he somehow bind you together after that first life? He never talks about what happened between murdering you and haunting you. He only says that he's yours, that he won't stop being yours so long as there's a you to have him. He knows nothing about the loss of death. Not that he would try to learn. He's so single-minded. Ghosts are obsessed with the past. Not you. Each life is a new experience. There are people you care about, people you despise, and they have births and weddings and deaths. What becomes of them? Reincarnation? Ghosts? A fabled something else? None of them haunt you. Only him. You bear out this second reincarnation long as you can, first surrounded by loved ones, and then alone in tears and hatred. 
he never leaves. If there's something he wants, you don't know what it is, and you wouldn't give it to him if you did. Maybe this time, since you haven't died young, you'll escape him. Your cells decay faster than your body can make them, and you dream of wasting away in flakes too tiny for his grasping fingers to put you back together. Death comes for your heart in the night while his breath strokes your white hair. Thank you for listening, and again, happy Halloween.